So let's go ahead and take a look at one of the projects we have already deployed that me and Neil have been uh, kind of gotten, gotten up ahead of time. As Neil mentioned, this is that similar project. It's already been deployed. We have multiple environments associated with it as well. So we can go into the production environment. We see we have our main branch and we have our intro logic environment as well, right? Um, so uh, in this moment, I, I wanna go ahead and kind of check out our experience, maybe uh, add something to the cart, uh, right? Uh, let's go ahead and maybe I'll open up my developer console just uh, to see what's going on and maybe a medium size for me. Uh, we don't have anything available. So we'll go ahead and add to cart and we see that we have an error that was thrown here on our application. And uh, for an e-commerce business, this is no good. You know that uh, this is actually going to hurt your conversion rates and uh, your sales. So Neil, is there anything we can do about this to quickly resolve and figure out what's going on here uh, from Sentry? Yep, uh, taking a look right now. It looks like I'm getting alerted. I'm going to go ahead and present my screen. I'm already at the issues page. So let's uh, let's take a look what's going on here. So here we can see about 11 seconds ago, uh, an error came in. I've already pulled that up uh, ahead of time here. And here, it looks like it's a type error, uh, cannot read property func of define. Let's take a look at what was happening. It looks like, you know, uh, we were on this page, which was uh, the product handle care with hoodie. Uh, let's go down to the stack trace here. It looks like uh, when add to cart was called, uh, the loading button started. And then this code just aired it out. Oh yeah, looks like we're calling, uh, this doesn't exist. And obviously this is gonna air out. Uh, we should get that fixed. Uh, I'll get back to you in a moment, Ramin. But what we can see here is we see the stack trace. And this is what we would have seen in the browser, what Ramin is showing. This is what Sentry did to it. We deobfuscated it using those source maps. And my favorite feature of all, we identified the commit that caused it all. And this is all done through that plugin. Uh, we have to set up the, the Git integration beforehand, which uh, the, the documentation goes over as well. But with Sentry and Netlify uh, and uh, passing over all the credentials as those environment variables and letting uh, the Webpack do its magic and also under, uh, understanding which commits made it into this release, what we can derive here is me being Neil and this commit causing that error means that I should be assigned this because I'm the best one equipped to fight these fires. And you all know Sentry, so these tags provide the clarity that I need in case uh, I, I need to understand who's being impacted. I understand what's going on here uh, before hitting the error. Uh, so we can see the add to, bar, bar, add to cart button was clicked, and it generated an error, and then any other further information we can capture as well. So we got all of that Next.js context. And I also under want, un, want to understand why this was slow. So with one click, I can go into performance and I see exactly what happened. The page was loaded. Next.js hydration stuff happened. The browser did its things, imported the resources that it need. And then a bunch of logic started happening. We started importing some, uh, some JSON files. And then at the end, we even see where Web Vitals kicks in as well. Uh, and then first input delay, the FCP, the LCP is all listed within here. So this gives us an understanding of exactly what was happening, where the slowness was, and is also linked to the error. So you can see, bam, an error occurred in this transaction. So now I understand what's broken on the right-hand side and what's slow on the left-hand side, all within one click, all within one interface, and I can get all the information. So perhaps this error introduced this slowness or you know this broken experience, but I have the entire picture here, the commit that caused it all, the impact that I had on the user and so forth. So uh, Ramin, uh, this looks like it's gonna take a little bit to fix, but you mind actually just uh, publishing one of our older stable versions and we'll just go in from there. And meanwhile, we figure out to stabilize and roll forward. Fabulous. Yes, this is where that workflow, um, full uh, developer workflow comes into the picture, right? We identified an error was uh, was thrown on our application and it was uh, actually in production. Um, so the team right now, uh, an engineering team right now would be on fire. So what we can do on Netlify is all of the assets, uh, every single release that we have published is still available on Netlify uh, for you to easily revert to. Um, we can go to an intro logic branch where we're, we've been working on. 
Um, and I can go ahead and revert to any previous version of the site. I can preview that deploy. Uh, for example, I can see how does this uh, function, does an error still occur? And I have that unique URL associated to that specific version of the site that I can kind of check and, and kind of uh, play around and work with Neil and team and say, hey, does this issue still occur? If it doesn't, I can go ahead and publish the, uh, my deploy and instantly Netlify is going to roll back your site and instantly is going to in, uh, invalidate the cache across the multi-global CDN. So uh, let's say users in London or Netherlands or uh, Sao Paulo, they won't be accessing your site with the previous older version of the site. Um, all of that has been instantly updated um, across the globe. Um, so now if we go back into our site, the latest version of the site is the rolled back version, which we reverted to, um, so the published version. Um, and that would be uh, that would be a workflow of where we kind of mitigate uh, an incident and easily resolve that issue um, in production. Um, so that I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing. Awesome. Thank you, Ramin. Looks like we're we're in a good place, and uh, we'll go ahead and debug that and then and, and go forward. Although I think I know I, what I need to do to fix that piece of code because it's pretty pretty obvious.